That's right. This is the most exotic, bizarre, monstrous object in the universe. We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. This photograph is the smoking gun. Black holes are among the universe's weirdest and most ominous objects. They have such intense gravity that neither matter nor light can escape their grip. A black hole's threshold is traced out by its event horizon, the point of no return. Anything that strays across this boundary is gone for good. Cosmic Roach Motel. Everything <laughs> checks in, nothing checks out. In fact, our solar system could be devoured for lunch by this black hole, and the black hole wouldn't even burp. That's how big this monster really is. Astronomers have made significant advances in observations of black holes in the past decade, with the first image of one's halo captured by the Event Horizon Telescope in 2019, and observations of cataclysmic black hole mergers through the detection of gravitational waves sent rippling across space-time. And now, based on the latest stunning observations of James Webb, we finally can start to piece together the origins of these enigmatic objects. Holes in as black as they are painted. They are not the eternal prisons they were once thought. Things can get out of a black hole, both to the outside and possibly to another universe. Join us as we dig deep into how James Webb just detected a black hole. The first thing we have to recognize, and this is a big thing to admit, is that we know, to a remarkable degree of certainty, what the universe was like in the very earliest moments of the hot Big Bang. The second thing we have to recognize is that we also understand the physics of how the overwhelming majority of the ingredients in the universe behave, how they collide, interact with themselves and one another, and so on. When we combine these two pieces of information, we wind up with something spectacular. The ability to calculate how the universe evolved during its early stages to astonishing precision, with very little that remains uncertain. Once the universe becomes filled with matter and radiation, for example, we know it expands and cools. As it does so, it also gravitates. Charged particles collide with radiation. The universe becomes less dense. The wavelength of each individual quantum of radiation gets stretched with the expanding universe, and particles can fuse together and or get blasted apart by interactions with others. The hot Big Bang is, in many ways, the crucible of creation, and we can observe the evidence for much that occurred early on from the relic signals we see today. Some of those signals are easy to predict, and many of those predictions have been borne out by observation. First, there's the large-scale structure of the universe. The cosmic web of how stars and galaxies group, clump, and cluster together, which requires a mix of dark matter and normal matter to explain, as well as a particular spectrum of initial seed fluctuations that are needed to form the particular web we have today. Second, there are the abundances of the light elements the elements that existed before any stars were formed that must have been created from an initial soup of protons and neutrons through the process of nuclear fusion and other nuclear processes like radioactive decays. And third, there's the leftover glow from the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background. It not only teaches us the temperature of the universe, but also the extent to which the universe has expanded throughout cosmic history the density of photons that exist from the Big Bang at present, and how the energy was distributed among those photons. On the other hand, there are certain other signals that only arise much later rather than having been seeded by the early universe. While they may or may not be easy to spot, it's a much more challenging task to predict their properties. One of those signals is the existence, abundance, and appearance of the first supermassive black holes, the ones that reside at the centers of massive galaxies within our universe. At the limits of today's observations, we've spotted black holes that are as massive as about bar one billion solar masses, a whopping 13.2 billion years ago. 
when the universe was merely 5-5% of its present age. How did those early black holes get so massive so fast? It's not impossible, but it certainly is a challenge for our current theories to explain what we see. We would need, for example, a seed black hole of about 10,000 solar masses to form just a hundred million years after the Big Bang, and it would then need to grow at the maximum rate that's physically allowed for the entire time just to get there. Either these black holes started off bigger than our theories expect, or they formed earlier than we realize, or they grow faster than we think they can. But that's where James Webb should shed a remarkable amount of light on these dark objects, because they accelerate the matter accreting onto them. Supermassive black holes can often be seen in radio wavelengths, identifiable as quasars. With its infrared eyes, Webb will be able to pick out the host galaxies that house these quasars, allowing us to match them up at these great cosmic distances for the first time. If we want to understand how black holes grow in the young universe, there's no better tool than Webb for finding out. And as expected, according to the latest update, the $10 billion time machine has just detected the oldest black hole ever observed, dating back more than 13 billion years to the dawn of the universe. The observations reveal it to be at the heart of a galaxy 440 million years after the Big Bang. At around a million times the mass of the Sun, it is surprisingly big for a baby black hole, raising the question of how it grew so big so quickly. Prof. Roberto Maiolino, an astrophysicist at the University of Cambridge who led the observations, said, The surprise is in it being so very massive. That was the most unexpected thing. The observations, published on the preprint website ArcSev, which is unseeable because no light can escape its grip, but astronomers detected telltale signatures of its accretion disk, the halo of gas and dust that swirls rapidly around the cosmic sinkhole. Astronomers believe the earliest black holes could help unlock a puzzle of how their gargantuan counterparts at the center of galaxies such as the Milky Way grew to billions, the times the mass of the Sun. Until recently, they were assumed to have simply snowballed over nearly 14 billion years, steadily growing through mergers and by gobbling up stars and other objects. But this snowball scenario cannot fully account for the epic proportions of present-day supermassive black holes. The latest observations of the galaxy called GNZ11 push the origins of this mystery back to black holes' infancy and suggest that they were either born big or ballooned extremely rapidly early on. As Prof. Andrew Ponson, a cosmologist at University College London, who was not involved in the research, said, Understanding where the black holes came from in the first place has always been a puzzle, but now that puzzle seems to be deepening. These results, using the power of James Webb Space Telescope to peer back through time, suggest that some black holes instead grew at a tremendous rate in the young universe, far faster than we expected. One explanation, known as the heavy seed scenario, is that an early generation of black holes was born from the direct collapse of vast clouds of gas, rather than from burnt-out stars that collapsed under their own gravity at the end of their life. Another possibility is that compact clusters of stars and black holes merged very rapidly in the early universe. A third, more speculative hypothesis is the existence of so-called primordial black holes that came into existence during cosmic inflation, the period of faster-than-light expansion of the universe that occurred a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. This would flip on its head the presumed order of play, in which galaxies came first and then black holes start growing within them. Primordial black holes would be effectively woven into the fabric of the cosmos from the outset. If that were true, it would have deep implications for the opening fraction of a second of our universe, said Ponson. Either way, the story of how black holes and galaxies grew up together is a riveting one that we are only just starting to piece together. However, beyond those three possibilities, a group of scientists believes there is a stunning explanation for the formation of the first black holes. 
In that scenario, our universe, like part of a cosmic Russian doll, may be nested inside a black hole that is itself part of a larger universe. In turn, all the black holes found so far in our universe, from the microscopic to the supermassive, may be doorways into alternate realities. According to a mind-bending theory, a black hole is actually a tunnel between universes, a type of wormhole. The matter the black hole attracts doesn't collapse into a single point, as has been predicted, but rather gushes out a white hole at the other end of the black one. In a paper published in the journal Physics Letters B, Indiana University physicist Nikodim Poplowski presents new mathematical models of the spiraling motion of matter falling into a black hole. His equations suggest such wormholes are viable alternatives to the space-time singularities that Albert Einstein predicted to be at the centers of black holes. According to Einstein's equations for general relativity, singularities are created whenever matter in a given region gets too dense, as would happen at the ultra-dense heart of a black hole. Einstein's theory suggests singularities take up no space, are infinitely dense, and are infinitely hot, a concept supported by numerous lines of indirect evidence but still so outlandish that many scientists find it hard to accept. If Poplowski is correct, they may no longer have to. According to the equations, the matter black holes absorb and seemingly destroy is actually expelled and becomes the building blocks for galaxies, stars, and planets in another reality. The notion of black holes as wormholes could explain certain mysteries in modern cosmology, Poplowski said. For example, the Big Bang Theory says the universe started as a singularity. But scientists have no satisfying explanation for how such a singularity might have formed in the first place. If our universe was birthed by a white hole instead of a singularity, Poplowski said, it would solve this problem of black hole singularities and also the Big Bang singularity. Wormholes might also explain gamma ray bursts, the second most powerful explosions in the universe after the Big Bang. Gamma ray bursts occur at the fringes of the known universe. They appear to be associated with supernovae or star explosions in faraway galaxies, but their exact sources are a mystery. Poplowski proposes that the bursts may be discharges of matter from alternate universes. The matter, he says, might be escaping into our universe through supermassive black holes, wormholes, at the hearts of those galaxies, though it's not clear how that would be possible. It's kind of a crazy idea, but who knows, he said. There is at least one way to test Poplowski's theory. Some of our universe's black holes rotate, and if our universe was born inside a similarly revolving black hole, then our universe should have inherited the parent object's rotation. If future experiments reveal that our universe appears to rotate in a preferred direction, it would be indirect evidence supporting his wormhole theory, Poplowski said. The wormhole theory may also help explain why certain features of our universe deviate from what theory predicts according to physicists. Based on the standard model of physics, after the Big Bang the curvature of the universe should have increased over time so that now, 13.7 billion years later, we should seem to be sitting on the surface of a closed, spherical universe. But observations show the universe appears flat in all directions. What's more, data on light from the very early universe show that everything just after the Big Bang was a fairly uniform temperature. That would mean that the farthest objects we see on opposite horizons of the universe were once close enough to interact and come to equilibrium, like molecules of gas in a sealed chamber. Again, observations don't match predictions because the objects farthest from each other in the known universe are so far apart that the time it would take to travel between them at the speed of light exceeds the age of the universe. To explain the discrepancies, astronomers devised the concept of inflation. Inflation states that shortly after the universe was created, it experienced a rapid growth spurt during which space itself expanded at faster than light speeds. 
the expansion stretched the universe from a size smaller than an atom to astronomical proportions in a fraction of a second. The universe therefore appears flat, because the sphere we're sitting on is extremely large from our viewpoint, just as the sphere of Earth seems flat to someone standing in a field. Inflation also explains how objects so far away from each other might have once been close enough to interact. But, assuming inflation is real, astronomers have always been at pains to explain what caused it. That's where the new wormhole theory comes in. According to Poplowski, some theories of inflation say the event was caused by exotic matter, a theoretical substance that differs from normal matter, in part because it is repelled rather than attracted by gravity. Based on his equations, Poplowski thinks such exotic matter might have been created when some of the first massive stars collapsed and became wormholes. There may be some relationship between the exotic matter that forms wormholes and the exotic matter that triggered inflation, he said. Notably, this model isn't the first to propose that other universes exist inside black holes. Damian Eason, a theoretical physicist at Arizona State University, has made the speculation in previous studies. What is new here is an actual wormhole solution in general relativity that acts as the passage from the exterior black hole to the new interior universe, said Eason, who was not involved in the study. In our paper, we just speculated that such a solution could exist, but Poplowski has found an actual solution, said Eason, referring to Poplowski's equations. Nevertheless, the idea is still very speculative, Eason said in an email. Is the idea possible? Yes. Is the scenario likely? I have no idea. But it is certainly an interesting possibility. And with James Webb, we just might get our answer sooner than anyone could have reasonably hoped. The findings are the latest in a series of stunning discoveries by NASA's Space Observatory just two years after its launch. James Webb is about 100 times more sensitive than previous telescopes, such as Hubble, at detecting infrared light, the part of the spectrum used to see the most distant objects. As Maiolino said, it is essentially equivalent to upgrading Galileo's telescope to modern telescope. It's 400 years of discoveries potentially compressed in the time span of James Webb's space telescope operations. He said that before the telescope's launch, there had been a possibility that a new window would open up onto a boring extension of what we know. That's not what we're seeing. The universe has been quite generous. We're really finding things that we were not expecting. As a piece of remarkable news, a new research just suggests that feeding black holes lurking at the center of most galaxies gulp nearby stars, gas, and dust the same way irrespective of how hungry they are. Until now, there appeared to be an order to these massacres. The hungriest of black holes, which also beam out very powerful radiation, were thought to eat one star about the size of our sun every year. Astronomers think matter collapses into disks around these very hungry cosmic beasts, which are then fed in a somewhat organized way. By contrast, less hungry black holes were thought to take something like 10 million years to consume a sun-sized star and are thought to be surrounded by chaotic streams of matter rather than neat disks. However, astronomers now say both systems are more similar than currently appreciated. According to study lead author Ilaria Rufa of Cardiff University, the chaotic process typically associated only with the latter systems, the less bright black holes, might in fact play an important role in the way the brightest black holes feed. Thus, this result was totally unexpected and can thus completely change our understanding of the physical processes through which different types of active black holes eat the surrounding material. This is really puzzling and exciting at the same time. To arrive at their conclusions, Ruffa and her colleagues studied 136 black holes, millions of times more massive than our sun, that sit billions of light years away from us. This included voids sitting in about 30 nearby galaxies studied by the powerful ALMA telescopes in Chile. The team found that light detected from all feeding black holes, especially in the microwave radiation region, 
is actually coming from disordered streams of matter. This is changing our view on how these systems consume matter and grow to be the cosmic monsters we see today, Rafa said in a statement. It also appears, the team says, that the matter tightly bound around the black holes shown the same way in both microwave and X-ray wavelengths, hinting that for highly luminous black holes, the observed glow is incompatible with an ordered flow of matter. Studying this light may also offer a new indirect method to estimate black hole masses, a crucial parameter to understand how these beasts, colossal in their own right but tiny, when compared to an entire galaxy, manage to affect, sometimes, in a dramatic way, the life of the host galaxy itself, said Ruffa. This research is described in a paper published December 5th in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. In addition, astronomers may have discovered an extragalactic intruder among stars that orbit the supermassive black hole at the heart of our Milky Way, Sagittarius A star. Sagittarius A star is surrounded by a cavalcade of stars, the rapid orbits of which have helped astronomers determine that the black hole has a mass around 4.5 million times that of the Sun. Yet, as useful as these stars are, their existence is somewhat mysterious. This is because the intense gravity of Sagittarius A star should make the heart of the Milky Way an environment that is far too turbulent and violent to allow the formation of stars at all. This has led scientists to theorize that the stars around Sagittarius A star may have migrated to this region after being born somewhere else in the universe. And new findings from an international team of scientists led by Miyagi University of Education researcher Shogo Nishiyama have revealed some of these stars may have had vastly longer journeys to Sagittarius A star than previously suggested. In particular, the crew discovered that a star designated S0 6 may be over 10 billion years old and could have originated 50,000 light years away from its current location. To deduce the true extragalactic origins of S06, Nishiyama and colleagues studied the star for eight years using the Subaru Telescope, an 8.2-meter optical infrared telescope located near the summit of Mauna Kea on the island of Hawaii, operated by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. This investigation revealed that the star, seen just 0.3 arcsecons away from the Sagittarius A star, has a chemical composition resembling stars found in small satellite galaxies of the Milky Way, such as the small Magellanic Cloud and the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. The team explained this chemical makeup by theorizing that S06 was born in a small Milky Way satellite galaxy that our galaxy actually cannibalized at some point in the last 10 billion years. This would have led to the star journeying tens of thousands of light years to Sagittarius A star, ultimately spiraling around our galaxy's black hole, rather than taking a direct path to the center of the Milky Way. If all this is true, it'd make S06 the first extragalactic star discovered near Sagittarius a star. However, many questions will remain about this star's existence and the story of all the other stars living on the edge of a supermassive black hole. As Nishiyama pondered in a statement, did S06 really originate outside the Milky Way galaxy? Does it have any companions? Or did it travel alone? With further investigation, we hope to unravel the mysteries of stars near the supermassive black hole. The team's research was published on December 1st in the journal Proceedings of the Japan Academy, Series B. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.